and welcome back Artemers. I hope you are doing so so well today. Today we are going to be talking about something super awesome. Sleep. <laughs> if you are new here, welcome. My name is Alex. I hope you are super excited to get down and dirty. I am a philosopher and uh, that's what we do here. So welcome. Everything in life requires moderation, right? We all know this and we're all supposed to practice it every single day. But the time that we choose to do things is very, very important, apparently. Realistically, our entire lives revolve around sleep. It's one little thing in our lives that we're required to do at least once every 24 hours. But what sleep does is tells us when we wake up and start our day as well as end our day. And we're supposed to fit an entire day's worth of stuff to do between these two times. Realistically, when we wake up and start our day, we have to be able to fit in all of our work and eat and art all into this one compacted formation and then find ourselves completely asleep, nearly instantly to online standards at least. But what's unfortunate here is our habits that we have brought up from our entire life shape our entire day and thusly shape our sleep. And so how we sleep tonight will affect tomorrow and the next day and this week will affect the next week, and so on and so forth, until we finally just get out of our cycle. So if you have bad sleep, this is probably the perfect video for you, because that's definitely what I'm talking about. Um, not entirely, but I have a problem, let's be honest. Nietzsche actually has a quote on sleep that I found and love. It is the number one quote if you google Nietzsche on sleep, but there is also a little bit more context to it. This is actually a perfect quote to take completely out of context from Nietzsche because everyone always knows if you find a Nietzsche quote, he either could have not said it, like in our last video, or is completely out of context and is supposed to be ironic or someone else said it. In this quote's instance, it's from Thus Spoke Zarathustra, so it is actually a quote from someone that's not just Nietzsche, because this is like a storybook. What's really ironic here is it's about sleep, and the guy continues on to talk about how you can get even better sleep, so there's the irony for you, and in fact, double irony. Um, so I think in this context it is something that Nietzsche does probably agree with. So Nietzsche writes here via a sage talking to Zarathustra and says, Sleeping is no mean for art. For its sake one must stay awake all day. So realistically the sage is saying, to do art you need to not sleep but then goes on to say how you can sleep even better and better and better. And then Zarathustra just like basically laughs in his face and he's just like, you're so close. <laughs> but realistically, with that in mind, what we can say is potentially when we want to do art, we have to plan ahead in advance. Um, realistically, if you're going to spend the night awake, doing art, then this is going to affect your tomorrow. And thusly, you can't really do it every single day, and that's how you get burnt out. From previous research that I've done, I don't actually remember who, but you are largely more creative at night and need to be able to get rid of this in order to sleep. The sage in Thus Spoke Zarathustra says you need to be virtuous in order to sleep or else you're gonna stay awake at night thinking that you're a bad person or wondering if you should be a bad person um no it's just being able to be creative 
before you go to bed. And that is why Zarathustra lasts right in his face. There are some people who tend to consume other people's art before getting ready for bed. And let's be honest, this is a lot less satisfying in most tenses or most cases. Um, especially when you're just scrolling and getting that instant satisfaction. There's no like deep emotional connection to what's actually satisfying you. But in either case, we do have a sort of extinguish of our creative desires before we can sleep. I know for me personally, I can't help but watch like an entire movie before I go to bed. Um, unless I've stayed up literally all night doing something creative, like it's four in the morning and I'm like, holy cow, where'd the time go? I need to go to bed. And then I can't. <laughs> it's not allowed. So within hustle culture, there is a sort of tendency to the mind thought of there is no success if there's no sacrifice. But the sacrifice tends to come at a large cost when people have multiple jobs, for instance, a real job and their side hustle, which is like an entrepreneur trying to get the ground growing while they have to actually pay their rent and food and all of that awesome good stuff, including, you know, medical bills. But this sort of like, 40 plus plus you know 10 plus hours a week being up to like 60 hours a week can definitely do a lot of damage to one's health i have done a lot of research in the past about sleep and i know one thing that's memorable is it can damage the brain um so this is not good at all not to mention if you do not get enough sleep this will affect your immune system which is just not good right now i don't know why i keep moving my hands so much but it's like don't judge me okay <laughs> but realistically we can be sacrificing a lot be that like a well-cooked meal that we take time to make or actual good night's rest which is you know terrible for you but we push ourselves past this to do what we have to do in society's terms to do what we want to do in our own terms which is largely our creative expression there is probably a large amount of people that find that the sacrifice is not worth it these are more likely the instances where it's not a real creative expression and or it's just a really bad time in the, the, the market. <laughs> but what's unfortunate here is that what we have to do overshadows what we want to do. And what I really want to do is just have us switch these terms and saying that what we want to do is something that we have to do. We have to let out our creative expression or else we will go mad. Our freedom isn't there. Our authenticity isn't there. Our ability to rid our suffering isn't there if there is no creative expression. Like these two words, creative expression, is a whole whopping world in the philosophy of life is suffering i could do a whole video on that and i'm pretty sure i have <laughs> i could do another one too but getting back to the point living properly does mean in a socio-economical sense to be able to pay your rent pay your taxes pay for food whatever it is hopefully you can just grow your own food if you're like awesome like that um, but there's a lot to pay for when it comes to living properly or, you know, well off as some super rich people like to say. <laughs> but living properly in an artful sense means that you are able to, as I was saying, get rid of your suffering through artistic expression. Plain and simple.
I have not been able to create in the traditional sense for quite some time now. It could be, you know, choice or time not spending that and working instead to very late hours because I slept in so much but there's other things I need to do like clean and work and take care of my dog and eat and all of that fun stuff. To a realistic extent it feels like I have not been able to. But this has gotten me thinking a lot in how, well, what is art in the first place? I think there is a point of consuming art that can still be productive in the fact that if you're watching something or consuming it in whatever means that may be, and it gives you ideas to think about and you actually find yourself maybe even pausing it to say, hey, I totally blanked out for the past five minutes because of what they said. This is art. Consuming art when it breeds thought is still art. And so for instance, if you're trying to do this to bed, you'll find yourself watching an entire movie before falling asleep. <laughs> I have to admit here, I watch movies to bed, but I try really hard to find the things I've seen a million times or else I'm just sitting there, either watching or thinking. It's one or the other. Back to the things that we're like forced to do throughout the day that takes up our time in order to do art or to sleep at the right time. What about eating? <laughs> you know, some people like to say we are forced to eat because humans need the food and others joke like just put an IV in me so I can continue what I'm doing. Classic joke right there. But I think what my sort of art has been recently has just been able to cook real meals where I can start just cooking and thinking or, you know, blending all of the ingredients onto the canvas of a pot on the stove. Beautiful metaphor for us there. And so if we look at, you know, maybe the small menial things that we do throughout the day as a sort of creative expression, we could do like, a, like micro napping, only micro arting so that's one thing that makes me feel a lot better when i accidentally take you know two hours to cook a meal i think the really most important thing about being able to be creative before you go to bed in order to sleep better is that we tend to keep our ideas you know put a pin in them but what really goes on here when we do put a pin in our ideas in our brain is that they will either deteriorate or stagnate they very very rarely actually foster and just fester instead and you got a bunch of sticky notes all over your head just covered and they're either falling off you're forgetting them losing their ink and you're forgetting the details or they're just staying in place and never going anywhere else for instance say you have a fantastic idea but it just needs like two more seconds of thought or at least being able to see it if you're not able to actually see your idea out on paper or a, just a quick whiteboard, you're not going to be able to see the minute details that are missing or the flaws in your very beautiful plan. Just one little flaw can stand out so much harder when you have it written down and right there before you. This actually makes me think a lot about one of the most like popular things when it says how to sleep better and that is have a piece of paper right next to you so before you go to bed if you have any ideas just jumbling away write them down so i guess i just 
went on a rant and that's already a huge thing. It's still a thing, so I'd suggest it. <laughs> and so how do we figure out where we can find the time for art? And that is, if you're anything like me, sleep. I know Nietzsche says that with sleep there is no art, but without sleep we won't be able to catch up on when we're supposed to actually be doing it. If you're anything like me, I work until like 10 or 11 p.m. and if I just got to bed earlier, I could work earlier and wake up earlier and according to the new sleep chronotype, you're actually still supposed to wake up in the a.m. like 7.30 a.m. if you're a night person and you're still supposed to go to bed at 12 freaking a.m. midnight which is insane to me it's mind-blowing I know that there are a lot of people who don't have the ability to just say I'm gonna work earlier and be able to finish work earlier because even I too have reasons why I work until like 10 p.m. or later even but this is when we have to talk about sacrifice Maybe there are days that we have to sacrifice our time for sleep to stay up doing art. But that just means that we can't do it all the time. But even for people who are like full time, all the way artists, don't stay up doing art all the time, I'm sure. Because this would lead straight to creative burnout. I know in particular, if I were to be a full time artist, I wouldn't even want to do commission work because everything would be on my own time and I would say no, I can only healthily make like 12 paintings a year and that's what I'm gonna do. But you know, some people cannot choose that. I'm an artist and I definitely can't. But back to what I was saying, reaching a sort of cycle to where we know when we're gonna stay up late and do art know when we're gonna actually go to bed on time and wake up at a decent time or else there is no art plain and simple because we have to work right i'm talking to the majority of human beings out there right it is difficult though so i know this is a very niche topic so i'm wondering who will watch it but if you're anything like me you definitely stay up until 3 in the morning uh, to do the things that you love. Because that's what sacrifice is all about, right? So it's probably going to be a super short video because I didn't do much more research other than looking at Nietzsche and reading Nietzsche for like an hour before recording this today. So if you're a huge Nietzsche fan, please let me know. There are very few of us, I think. Anywho, if you are all the way to the end of the video, I thank you so, so, so much. And if you have any trouble getting to bed, please let me know if you are thinking about being better, like me. Um, I've been wanting to check out the new sleep chronotype, wake up at 7, 7.30 go to bed at midnight. Uh, still sounds insane when I say it out loud. 7 a.m. But who knows, maybe I'll take it like super duper seriously like Wheezy Waiter and catch up with you guys back in like a month or something. Um, well, Wheezy Waiter wink for ya. Oh my gosh, so classic. Anywho, I hope you're really, really enjoying your summer and uh, are having a great and safe time with lots of sunscreen, uh, I'm sure. Again, if you're anything like me, am I right? <laughs> um, but with that, I'll let you go. Thank you so much for taking time to spend here today with me and I hope you have a great rest of your day. So, bye! One of these days that will never end That just seem to spend for hours on end Switching back and forth Ten inch, six to seven inch, four inch, four K, ten, eight P You're wasting your
your time.